Shaket Mosulmane is the politician whose office is at the centre of a landmark national security investigation. He was elected as a Labor member in New South Wales Parliament's Upper House in 2009 and served with the modest profile of an opposition backbencher. But that suddenly changed when federal police and ASIO began investigating whether one of his part-time staffers was working covertly on behalf of the Chinese government. Excuse me, the first one here. When did you first learn the federal police was investigating allegations of foreign interference within your office? When they knocked on my door. When they knocked on my door at home and uh, I opened the door and there's a uh, federal agent and uh, wanted to search my house. And I asked what for, is it, uh, something about foreign influence? It makes it appear that my home is a, like a, a, a center for espionage. It's, it, it, was, it was really shocking and, and, and mentally stressful um, on me, my family, my, my dad next door. Do you accept that foreign influence in Australia is a concern? Well, uh, if there is foreign influence, uh, it would be a concern. Like in any, in any country, any country where there's foreign influence on its sovereignty, on its territory, that would be a concern. There's no doubt about that, yes. And do you accept that ASIO had made public warnings about the possibility of foreign influence? I wasn't aware of that the 19, uh, 2016 public warnings. And, um, and it wasn't of concern to me because I'm just doing my work with multicultural communities. But Mr. Mossman, you, you can't have been ignorant of the way China does attempt to influence politicians in Australia. Sam Daschari's career well, ended unfair, because Paul. of I'm fair to say I can't have been ignorant. Um, well, if I, you just I, let me finish I, the, the yeah. question. Sam Daschari's career ended in 2017 because of it. And surely cases like that should have put you on notice. Well, Sam Dastiari's case is, uh, is completely different. Um, and I wasn't ignorant of any influence because, like I said to you, Paul, uh, I've never been asked to visit China. I've never been asked to uh, uh, go to any conferences or anything like that from the Chinese, never paid, uh, uh, never been paid for any trips to China. I've always done my own. Uh, it's, a, it's a fact, Paul. So, so I, I have no uh, concerns about uh, China influence on me. In your 2013 parliamentary disclosure, it does say that you received hospitality and land transport in Shanghai and Guangzhou as a gift. Isn't that at least one instance where you did have your costs covered by in China? No, not really, because I always pay my airfare, my own accommodation, and I'll always disclose uh, my uh, any other expenses or anything. So is it your view then that you had no need to take any precautions with respect to foreign influence concerns at all? Well, it's not, it's not my view that I, I don't need to take precautions. I mean, everybody should take precaution. And did you? I mean, I mean, I'd be the last. I mean, like I said, I'm a member, I'm a backbencher. I have no portfolio. I don't have anything to provide, if you like, that would be of interest to, to the Chinese. China's rise in this respect is an appropriate phrase. Mosulmane has attracted media and political scrutiny over his praise for the Chinese government and criticism of Australia. In a June 2018 speech, you said that the only way for China to reach its potential is for China to force a change to the rules and create a new world order. What did you mean by that? And obviously, as a nation rising, it obviously will uh, demand, and there's no doubt, will demand uh, respect as a, as, a, as a great nation. And, um, and that was it. It wasn't that I wanted China to, be, to change the world order. In an essay published in February this year, Mosulmane also praised China's response to the pandemic. He made sweeping claims about Australia's slow response to the pandemic and made other claims about anti-China sentiment in Australia. You also penned an essay in February this year yep. praising China's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yep. And you said that the obsolete scum of white Australia yeah. was, was re-emerging. I never said that. Uh, what I actually said, this is, the old, this is the old white Australia fear of the yellow peril resurfacing. I never said white Australian scum. It is completely uh, stupid of any member of parliament to say that white Australians are scum. It's, uh, I reject it totally and absolutely. 7.30 also commissioned two independent translations of the essay. They indicate he was referring to outdated white Australian prejudices re-emerging.
The early morning federal police raid on Mosulmane's Sydney home eight weeks ago left his political career in tatters. This is a very serious issue, one of national security. New South Wales Labor suspended Mosulmane from the party and he's now on a leave of absence from Parliament. Do you believe you're a suspect in their investigation? No, they even told me point blank, you know, a suspect. Federal police named this man as a suspect in their investigation. He's John Zhang, hired by Mosulmane as a part-time staffer in 2018. What did Mr Zhang actually do in your office? Did he help you write speeches or develop yeah. policy? Yeah, no, he never wrote any speeches. He basically translated what I wrote. So if I said, if I gave a speech in the House, um, an adjournment speech, uh, and that is uh, of interest to the uh, wider uh, Chinese community, I'd ask him to translate it. So there's been reports that in 2013, Mr Zhang attended a, a training course organised by the Overseas Chinese Affairs Office, which is a branch within China's State Council and is believed to be a recruiting ground for the CCP. Were you aware of that at the time you hired him? No, no. Like many of the presidents of various organisations, they get invitations to go to China for various conferences. And he went to a conference, a two-day conference. Did it concern you at all? No, because many, many Chinese community leaders go to China to forums, to conferences. Did Mr Zhang ever lobby you to change the party's position on China? No, never. But Mr Mosselman, you've made public speeches praising China you have a staffer who attended a state-run training course. Um, you've had some small hospitality gifts provided by China, and yet you've never been concerned you could be the target of a foreign influence this, campaign. But Paul, this, this is becoming, you know, McCarthyism on steroids. I mean, just because I've got a Chinese person doesn't mean that the secrecy, there's uh, espionage going on. So in other words, the, the 1.2 million Chinese that we have in Australia are all potential agents. This is unacceptable. This is really dangerous stuff. In August, Mr Zhang's lawyers lodged a High Court challenge to the legality of search warrants used to raid his office and home and the lawfulness of foreign interference laws. The High Court filing reveals that police allege a chat group was used to covertly advance China's interests. You were a member of that chat group. What was discussed? I don't in it? know what this uh, allegation is. Uh, there's nothing sinister, uh, but it's been made to sound like something covert. Who's in that chat group exactly? Well, there's about seven people. There was two who are academics, one from ECNU, East China Normal University, and one from Beijing Foreign Studies University, and a couple of uh, uh, journalists, foreign, uh, uh, foreign journalists, and one, John Zhang, and another is a friend of mine from Hurstville. So these are individuals who uh, had, I have never seen anything um, untoward from any of them. Did you discuss your parliamentary work or speeches you were preparing to give over that chat? Well, not necessarily. I mean, I mean uh, sometimes we, uh, we share uh, articles uh, or we share speech or we share comment, we share uh, 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 jokes. This is, a, this is a common human thing. John Zhang's lawyers told 7.30 in a statement that their client had not been charged with any offences and that he firmly denies any criminal wrongdoing. A spokesman for the Australian Federal Police declined to answer any of 7.30's questions while the investigation is still proceeding. If it was proven that a foreign influence plot was directed from within your office, could the public still have confidence in you as an MP? I, I can't answer a question based on uh, hypotheticals. I mean, they, you know, if they have something, they should have. They, if there was a plot, they should have told us. They should have told the New South Wales Parliament. Mr. Mosselman has never faced any charges. He says he's determined to return to Parliament. They beamed the whole operation to the world. I mean, the federal police um, inside told me that I'm not a suspect, but outside I was uh, a criminal. It's just a, a shocking event it has and will leave a scar on us for, for many, many years to come. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.